and you try, sort of time your ban so that you get the most uh, feared champion there in with your last one and you don't give it any time for your opponents to react to your ban. It looks like they're letting the last one time. They did, uh, they did gr drop down the, the ninjas already though, yep. so it is going to be uh, an available Anivia again. <laughs> Probably won't see yep. him lock that one in though. They and gave him a chance and he flubbed it, so. The timeout has been done. You can see Kennen and Thresh for the two bands, Lisa and Rumble and Chen coming in on the other side, which means Spider. Spider coming in for velocity here. No surprise with the first pick, Elise here. And Kane does love that one. Chris also plays Elise. So it's, again, one of those flexible picks. She can go anywhere. It doesn't tell your opponents what kind of strategy you want to run. She fits into a lot of things. She can yep. pick people off. We just saw the cocoons in the last game having a great effect. She's also a, a very good duelist. So a lot of options still open to Velocity, not locking themselves into any corners. This scares me when Curse shows Oriana early. A lot of what I like to call the dip, duck, dive, dodge team, whatever have you. Dignitas loves to run into an Aatrox, a Shen, uh, whatever have you. Ezreal to jump out of that command shockwave, and it is huge to have missed in a fight. But we'll have to see. Nijacky also has a very good Oriana, so it can go both ways. That's the 50 50 there. Twitch being picked up. We heard Cobb give out a howl yesterday when that got banned out. He was a little sad, so <laughs> he's picking it up today. It's a very popular AD carry. Twitch is definitely uh, up there in the in tier one and worthy of those first picks here. Now, a, a Galia mouse over, it's interesting just because it's it's another one that we don't see a lot, mm -hmm. an area effect that would work well with the Oriana because of the point you were talking about, people dodging shockwaves. If you lock them in with Galio, then they can't dodge them. Haven't seen Galios too much. People falsely <laughs> alting. But who would do that? Maple Street and Evanes gets to pick up here. We have a Nasus and not a Shivana coming in. <laughs> so Velocity have picked up that very flexible pick we talked about with the Elise. Zach is another champion that's interchangeable with her. So either of those could be jungle or top lane. The only thing is Curse aren't going to be really thrown off by that because both of them are magic damage based and both of them are very similar. So it's not going to affect the the counter pick, so, so to say, for that solo lane. Um, it just means that we're not quite sure who is going to use each of those champions. And Velocity have picked up themselves both disengage and engage here. Looks like we have a very skill shot based team coming in here from Velocity. They don't hit it. It will be troublesome. But again, it's going to have to be Curse getting in close for this engagement as well. They're walking in so far. Their initiation with everything they have. Edward now to pick up. We'll see what Voiboy Boy gets in that top lane. And it, we, it's interesting. We usually think of uh, Zyra's Stranglethorns used as a defensive maneuver. Uh, but in this composition, it will be very easy for him to lay that down offensively because they have so many things to set it up. They've got Zach who can start the engage from very long uh, ways away, and then they followed up with both the uh, Lissandra and the Varus ultimates to lock people in place. And then if you lay your Stranglethorns under that, then they'll stay there long enough for the two seconds for the pop-up. Now this has to be taken into consideration that four strong AP champions on the side of Velocity. They kind of have all their eggs in one basket here. It's a very AP heavy team. Even Varus as an AD carry adds a lot of magic damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, from that Blighted Quiver. So, Curse are probably going to be getting one of the new Aegis of the Legion and um, very easily upgraded into that locket. Probably going to be on that St. Vicious there. But I want to shout out the last pick that they did go for with um, the Zed. Wow. We will be seeing once again the Duelist of Duelists. And if it's Boy Boy playing it, I'm very excited because he loves looking for those one versus one fights. Still looking. They they do have the ball initiation, the flash crescendo, but it's all, I would say, a very heavy initiate. It takes a lot to get in there. If you miss, high risk, high reward coming in. We have the Zach, obviously, for good initiation coming in this in the other side. We've seen Medios. We've seen Nian do it. Hell, we've seen everybody do it. Why even name people? <laughs> so we'll have to see what these guys have coming in for the second match of the day. Super Week isn't even halfway over yet. We have way more games to go. I'm excited. <laughs> Velocity is excited. Can't you tell? <laughs> Look how animated they are. 
And King Inc. Always having a smile. These, it's Cop. There it is. I was going to say Cop's Twitch. He drums. He there did it, it yesterday is. with the interview. He drums on his leg. He drums everywhere. It gets him going. You can actually see it in like a PAX uh, North American regional video last year. He's dancing in the seat, getting himself prepared. All of these guys kind of have that uh, little quirk. And a lot of people have their rituals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Reggie's might be the most annoying with that cough that he does every time they get in. It is a little bit select. of a nervous cough. It kind of gets to him, and then he starts the game, and it completely goes away, and he becomes the strat caller for Team Solo Med. Who knew? Who would have knew? Just right behind us, though, it's Velocity and Curse on your screen. They split the ways, and we enter on to the Rift. Second match of the day is now underway. All right, so this match, we're probably going to be seeing, you know, at around the 15 to 20 minute mark, Curse s grouping up with their four members besides Voy Boy um, and trying to siege up. They're going to be, they have great wave clear, so... If, uh, if Velocity stick to their five-man group, then this four-man team of Nasus combined with Orianna and, and Twitch and Sona are actually going to have a very easy time of wave clearing and defending turrets while Zed split pushes. And it'll be very interesting to see what member Velocity can send to go deal with Zed because they don't have any teleports um, on this Velocity team. It's actually Curse that have the teleport on Jackie. So is this Ooh, Maple. Oh, Maple Street... Is this going to be going into a Hydra in the end for Zed? For Zed, uh, it could be. The auto attack reset, or a, it's a free auto attack right, is what it is. Right. When active of either Tiamat or Hydra is actually very good on Zed. You know, it adds damage just to the mm -hmm. death mark just like any other item active does here. Ooh. So it could very well be a Tiamat Oh, rush. no! Echo oh, is going. Echo! Yesterday, wow. he got hit up on a Nivea, too, and today... I was. It goes to Edward, though. I just kept talking because I figured word. he was flashing <laughs> over, but he hesitated until the last second to flash even after he's already going down from the Ignite. That was rude. He even had said, good, ha good luck, have fun, yo, in chat. He was the only one. Oh, that's why you don't type at all <laughs> in, the, in the LCS. Oh, so one kill coming up very quickly, and it will be acted on. That was a back wow. nigh Jackie. He picks himself up a fairy charm, actually, to get going in this lane. And uh, that will be very nice for him on his way to an Athenes or that Morello. Well, like Athenes. yeah, the first blood there, picking up by uh, by Edward. Mm -hmm. True to form, grabbing True up the, the last hit. <laughs> he did have the Ignite ticking. I'm not quite sure if he overwrote Boy Boys. It looks like it's a little bit less on the cooldown there. So he was able to grab that with the auto attack. I don't NK. think they can get in far enough to pressure this. Oh, they did! They pressure his smite. He didn't know what was coming on from the other side. So we'll have to see how they utilize this. Saint still working with his. And we actually have Zyra helping out with that one. So Maple Street is currently solo versus Jackie down here. And he's just fine. Varus versus Orianna. They could actually leave that one versus one for a while. And he'd be okay until the jungle pressure does come in. Now for a factor of this, why do we see supports going with the AD carry and not somebody else? So the whole oh now we're going real deep here. This is the <laughs> this is uh the very beginning of League of, Le League of Legends, uh, back in season one and even before season one, mm -hmm. we didn't have the solid meta of supports always going with AD carries. Right. And it wasn't until uh, the no players on the North American server collided with players on the European server in international tournaments, where the whole meta of supports going to babysits AD carries came about. Europeans had this bright idea to send an extra champion with one of these very item-dependent champions that all these AD carries are classified as mm -hmm. to help them CS in the early game. So it's all about them just providing a padding for the early weak game of AD carries. These champions are very susceptible to being all in or ganked early, and that's why they bring a support with them to help them through the early stages so that they can get the CS and get the gold because those same champions scale the best with items. Well, it seems to have worked because many a story can be told oh, to our, our nieces and nephews this day. <laughs> yes. Four minutes into this one, no stories to be told just yet except for a very fast first blood on just a waltz through middle here for Curse. Echo is looking to come back from that one. He's already, again, been kind of taken out of the lane, coming back with a ring, and he also has the flask, so he's trying to stay there as long as possible right now. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty interesting uh, history lesson, actually, because you know Dota has <laughs> Dota's got a, a a different sort of system where they have tiers of supports, and some of them are full supports, and they only buy awards and stuff, and then there's like half 
supports. <laughs> like, they have the number one position, two, three, four, and five, and that's kind of how they judge how much gold you get. It's very interesting how the different games operate uh, and distribute the gold. Let's see how they distribute it this time. We have both of the 80 carries. Not playing like we see Sneaky from Cloud9 play. Both of them, Cop and Maple Street, like to farm up very much so and are those DPSers for the team. Chris getting Ooh. very close because NK Inks on the backside. They are not focusing their damage though. He couldn't get to Edward, so he had to go for Cop. They disengage. The Elise Zach combo does get the flash out of Edward mm -hmm. though on the squishy Sona. She's extremely vulnerable right now and will have to play a lot more defensively. You can see Cop and Edward both talking to each other as those came. They just hit four together, at least Cop did. He is low on mana, but enough to get a flask out and really stop an initiation. So they feel like they're safe enough for now. And NK Inc's doing something here. When you go into this push, the AD Karen support are never <laughs> quite sure if you've actually decided to recall or if you're still in there. So Cop does a smart thing there, throws in the Venomous Cask, and NK Inc decides to wait it out once again. Wow. Woo, so close. Trying to go for this pressure. The slingshot does go There's on no Edward. Oh, it gets a cocoon from the side. If they can get there in spider form, Edward did not expect this. They got a few more shots. No, the cell division will not go in. And here comes the teleport. Jackie is going to lock up NK Inc. here. Not hard crowd control, but enough, enough to pop out the Bloblets. Who's going to get it? Who do they leave it for? Edward. Oh, uh, God, God, God. Give it to him. So. <laughs> Patience may be a virtue, but it did not pay off for NK Inc. there. He waited so long to get that gank off, and in the end, they get a they feed a double kill for it. Edward doing an amazing job staying alive there, even without his flash available. The ward only in the top lane there for velocity. They went in on that quite hard without having anything in the river. I'm going to make sure I'm not blind here and it's sitting under the other ward. Good, it's not. So it was no warts for Velocity there. And I was figuring, is Edward going to play this like, I'm going to sit here like we might have someone coming or maybe we don't know what we're doing. And that's really kind of like my favorite way to play it is, oh, I'm totally in danger. You should aggress on me. You just bait him right in. Well, the thing is, they actually had even a stronger sense of confidence because uh, St. Vicious was doing the same thing. He's He's been in the bottom lane farming right. up minions. Right. So if they have vision of him, they're like, yeah, all right, we can do this. <laughs> I just have to wait for long enough, and Cop and Edward will think I'm gone. And then doesn't work out. Womp, womp. Seven minutes in, three to zero with the activity that's been going on in this one, and Velocity has not liked it whatsoever. 10,000 gold to 8,500. That's your gold lead in favor of Curse, but still no turrets have been dropped. We are coming up on that eight-minute mark that diminishing turret armor. So we may see a bit more of the dive and engages so they can get that turret, maybe work on this dragon. And we haven't really talked about this before, but the switch of sending Zed to go versus Lissandra instead of Orianna um, was not only because of the AD carry and support switch uh, that went up top there mm -hmm. for Curse, but because they don't want uh, Jackie having to deal with that very dangerous lane versus Echo, where Echo could easily set up a, um, a gank attempt from Zac. Lissandra can lock you in place, and then that enables a very easy Elastic Slingshot to land from NK Inc. And is this kind of, you, you see Lissandra, obviously a mage, uses mana, would go for the Doran's Ring for a little bit more HP instead of a Chalice, just as Nijacky would? Well, the Doran's Ring is a much more offensive early start for the uh, for the AP Mages than the Chalice. Mm -hmm. Chalice will give you that magic resist, but since he's going up against Zed, doesn't need magic resist. Right. We'd rather have that extra AP for the kick. We'll see if he can get that kick to go. Not getting help from NK just yet, but he is on the backside. And they're going to try to throw this one over the shoulder, possibly. But NK Inc. is going to stay in his jungle, so no aggression there just yet. Chris trying to hold off on this top turret, and you can see that act that turrets in the top and the bottom lane have been taking more damage throughout these lanes as these players are pretty much figuring out the 3.10 patch a little more. Like we said, coming into this week of LCS, yeah, the players played it on live, but it's a learning experience here in the stress of the studio. And the top lane here is actually the one going to go down first, and that's helped out a lot mm -hmm. because of that double kill. I mean, it, well, not double kill, but two kills that Edward and Cop got up there. So, And this is huge if they can keep it. If they can switch back down to the bottom lane, you have that support back onto Dragon, and Velocity is lost without that tower in the top lane. And like we said, with no uh, global teleport here mm -hmm. from Velocity, whoever's up in that top lane is on that island by themselves, and they won't be able to join. Mm -hmm. Whereas Curse could easily send 
Jackie, who's been in a side lane already, up there to deal with him. And he's got Summoner Teleport that will be back available in another 20 seconds. Yeah, like he's more than happy to go mid. Now he can just roam. He doesn't have to use that again. It's already got him a kill, so using it efficiently. Ten minutes coming up onto the clock. It looks like Velocity will finally get an answer back. Oh no, St. Vicious throwing down the Wither and the ultimate, getting that AoE damage in, but NK Inc. is there to answer. He goes straight back. They haven't taken the turret out yet, but Curse is leaving their turret for this fight. They want blood outside the walls, and it looks like they are going to chase down. Eveniscus will be the next one since NK Inc. has the escape, tries to throw on his health, gets some back and deter them away, but it's not going to be enough. Cop did a good job there flashing that chain of corruption, but even so, that was an ill-advised uh, aggressive move from Velocity, and it's also going to cost them this dragon. Without the presence of their dual lane, it'll be suicide to go uh, try and contest this dragon. You know, Jacoby, we just talked about it, them switching back down to the bottom lane, the power of that duo, especially Edward, now that he is level seven, that crescendo completely oh, used in that fight. for the suicide move. He didn't move. get it. Oh, he has to flash out NK Inc. He's got a smile on his face, look at him. <laughs> Good try. NT and K. NT indeed. Boy Boy picking up blue buff. He's going to get a lot of energy back onto that one. It still gives him a little bit of help there. 11 minutes on the clock. Five kills for Curse. Looking very good here. 10 minutes into the game. And I like how Cop Ooh. stayed true. Wow, Jackie does oh. get caught. Just sneaking around that first minion there. Very threading the needle. Chris throwing out some nice cocoons. I remember coming into the uh, the promotion tournament, Chris, you know, Psycho Sid was playing, and cocoons were huge when Elise, you know, hadn't reached those balance changes yet that she's recently had, but still using it to great effect in the jungle and in the top lane. Same thing with Zach. A lot of what was used in the jungle is all over the place now. And she does still have that great burst combo mm -hmm. with uh, her human and spider form cues. You could see the effectiveness of the chalice, though, that, that Jackie had rushed there. Yeah. The magic is <laughs> coming into play. Ooh, boy, boy, getting locked down. There's the ultimate coming in from Echo. They don't have enough to kill him in a 2v1, though. So that's what I was talking about when I was talking about the reason that they switched Ooh. Zed to go mid versus Lissandra. Because Lissandra's got great uh, gap closing and uh, lockdown ability, but Zed can be, uh, is very slippery. He can get away from that himself. And since Lissandra doesn't have the power to burst him down from 100% to zero by herself, Voiboy does a great job. Gets out alive. And you can see Edward's stats coming up there. As we look down at those five kills of the match, three of them are, in fact, Edwards. <laughs> Doing a great job cleaning up those. He has participated in every kill, 302. He has been omnipresent on the map as a support, and it has worked out very well for Curse so far. 5,000 gold is what they're creeping up on. They're just under that. The turret's falling really slow for them, so I feel like they're not making their win definitive. They're winning, and they're okay with it. Oh, yeah. You're always okay with winning. <laughs> well, you're always okay with it, but this is where teams make their comeback. Yeah. NK Inc. and team have initiations on Dragon. They have the ability to get back and fight those things. So I think Cop, and, or Cop Curse, rather, has to start rolling the snowball a little faster. Yeah, that, that is a good point because Jackie actually just uses Teleport, just, you know, getting back to lane. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a tool down for, for uh, another move that they would possibly want to go for. But they'd rather just get the guaranteed slow gold, just getting back to lane oh. quicker so he could get those minion farms and get over here to contest the blue, not be able to pick Whoa. it up, though. Jackie using that W, using that W first before Shockwave, you lose a lot of damage. So he kind of blew the teleport, blew the ultimate there, and they were only able to really contest blue without taking it. Five so to zero. They weren't able to grab that one up. No, but not at all. They and Jackie did, has no mana now. They did, however, retain <laughs> <laughs> retain the presence in their lane. Because uh, Chris took so much damage grabbing that blue, they were able to force him back to base. And Jackie can farm a little bit freer. I'm not going to say this is pretty extended here for a laning phase. We still have the 80 carry supports in, I believe, quite healthy turret lanes here. No, that's not healthy at all. Aside <laughs> of Curse. Velocity's turret in the bottom lane is super healthy. Curse's... Not so much. They have kept it standing, though, and that's all that they need to do at this point in yeah. the game. Uh, the next step will be some uh, some more aggression from Cop here. He's already shown that he will not hesitate to use Twitch's invisibility to go on the offensive and put himself a little bit in danger. That's even more pronounced now that he has completed his Blade mm -hmm. of the Ruin King, which adds so much chase potential. He's got two slows now um, to go try and pick people off. 
And what is Velocity looking to do here? Echo coming up with the Zanyas. How does that synergize with their initiation? So when you do have uh, Lissandra with a Zanya, she's extremely difficult to focus down. She has two ways of going invulnerable. And when she does actually finish that ability, it means that she won't have to use her ult on herself for defensive purposes, and she can lock down a high priority target, okay. which will probably be Void Boy uh, and Cop if she can actually get to Cop, which are both very squishy, and they would love to be able to use that lockdown on either of those targets. Looks like they have the dive potential to get back there. There's no Karthus wall or something to stop them dead in their tracks. But Chris, he's getting a little attention in the top lane, going to the chase down with St. Vicious here. Spider versus Dog with a bit of Doll on the backside. And it looks like Chris, he's going to transfer the blue buff over. It goes down. It actually goes to Boy Boy as he comes up. off on the right <laughs> side. Oh, it goes. There it is. Night deck. Up and down. Just <laughs> sitting under him. I couldn't see it yet. Oriana, one of the best Duelist support utility duelist, not in just oh. Xing someone out, but with that blue buff, it will be a problem for Velocity. Echo made a, you know, that was a very interesting trap he was setting up on the other side of blue buff. It definitely would have been uh, not in his favor because Void Boy coming over with that extra energy regen mm -hmm. and his ult available would not have had a hard time dueling Echo by himself. It doesn't look like NK Inc. is going to get too much help here from his friends. Velocity will be forced to cover the other lanes, like we said. There's still AD carry support in that bottom lane at 16 minutes. The mid lane is still going back and forth. Echo trying to put pressure onto Boy Boy as he farms. But really, these guys are just trying to give each other a hard time, and it's not working. They know what to do, and they know how to act. 16 minutes in, still a shutout here for Curse in turrets and in kills with a 5,000 gold lead. And that is that side benefit. You know, at least... Lissandra, uh, she usually does build the Zanyas, but having it start with Seeker's Arm Guard just helps a lot when you're mm -hmm. winning against Zed because that's a lot of armor that's going to deter Voiboy Boy from going all in on you. Taking stock of what kind of builds we have going on, the Blade of the Rune King coming in for Cop. I thought Void Boy was going to go in there, but he decides just to go for quick aggression. It's because of the Dragon. They're looking to see if they can pressure them off here. That Bloodthirster on Maple Street, the flip side AD carry, we can see as he is that AD caster. You're looking to get damage out of your abilities, but nobody's going to contest this. I don't think they even knew the time. All right, so another Dragon. Curse doing a good job grabbing the second one up here as well and doing exactly what they need to with the composition. Now they're rotating down towards bottom, and they actually have the numbers advantage, even though NK Inc's looking to go. Oh, that's a great initiation. They have the two perfect people in the front. It's forced to flash on both of them simultaneously. Velocity looking good on that fight. Getting a flash off of Sona is so important for Velocity. That was actually a really good aggressive move from NK, even though they couldn't capitalize at that time. Now Cop goes aggressive. That's quite a bit used on NK Inc. His flash is now burned. It was actually wrong. Cop was able to just waddle out of that last one, so he still has all his summoners up, which is why we saw a little more aggression from Curse there on that. And Evaniscus right there, landing those Strangle Thorns, uh, just saved, or the Grasping Roots, excuse me, just saved uh, NK Inc.'s life. A lot of the kills slowing down now. Edward hasn't been participating in them as much. One kill, however, going across the board. Void Boy looking to get his chalk mark on there. And Velocity still looking to grab their first. They have been positioning a lot better than previous fights. Evaniscus, usually the one to get caught out and go down. Him and Maple Street are really staying on the buddy system this time. They're 176 to 150. They're looking to be able to take this down a little bit later. Yeah, and the reason Velocity seemed to be sort of floundering around right now is because their team, they were, they were really looking to, at this point in the game, be able to go with a team fight so they could make use mm -hmm. of the amazing initiation that Lissandra has to set up their Varus ultimate into their Zyra ultimate and, uh, and Zac bouncing around. But since they're so far behind this early, which they did not expect, it's very hard for them to win a, a big five-on-five five fight. And they're having to spread out and look for picks where they actually have the numbers advantage. Ooh, there's the one invulnerability you were talking about. He won't have to use the second. Actually, he doesn't have the second. The Zanyas is still quite far away. Forgot we're only 19 minutes into this one as it chugs along. We're going to see what they can continuously do. As we see Velocity 
knowing they have that engagement, well, so actually, knowing, Curse knowing that Velocity has that engagement, they have that, how long is it okay to keep this laning phase going until it starts to hurt you? How long is it okay for Curse? For, for Curse, because yeah. Curse are, Curse are fine with this one because Velocity have very little options and, and they're fine with continuing to uh, farm out each of these lanes oh. because they're winning each of them and their gold lead is only going to slowly increase. What they're doing by by uh, not making the move themselves is forcing Velocity to make a decision where they put themselves out and make it a little bit riskier of a play and allow Curse to capitalize on it. Curse has been quite sure about their strategies, their engagements, and their gameplay. This is definitely the curse we saw at the beginning of the spring split, the one that made that run, the one that held first place for quite some time. Really coming into their game, St. Vicious having a hand Ooh, in the first blood. Maple Street. We'll see what they can do. Oh, the crescendo misses on the backside. Edward just playing a song for Maple. That was Cop coming in again. He used the ambush stealth to get in position right next to Maple Street, but Maple Street with a good flash getting out of that crescendo, saving his life. St. Vicious cleaning up his jungle. The same thing goes for NK Inc., but he starts to hover towards the bottom side. They may be able to activate an initiation here. They've just used the slow. Cop hits it. He forced the cleanse onto Cop. I would say Maple Street hits it. And in Varus Ultimate, probably one of the most missed ultimates of an AD carry. It's hard to hit, as well as the Grasping Roots. You know, both CC abilities from that duo lane. Um, our skill shots and they're uh, fairly difficult skill shots to hit, mm -hmm. but that's still why you bring the cleanse because when they do hit that could easily <laughs> be your life right there without that one uh, That could be one dead cop. So the difference between taking cleanse and taking barrier Ooh. is a lot of lane Power here good grasping roots something you see a lot is when you get that jungle presence and he leads you reinitiate on that St. Vicious Edward. reading this like a book and they're able to come down Edward picking up his fourth kill of the game Edward with four kills and the rest of his team with only three kills combined. He is definitely doing his support carry job very well. The man brings Ignite to the game. What do you expect? Boy, boy in the mid lane. He was just kind of sitting there, maybe doing some window shopping, but he gets himself out of danger. Global gold going in favor of Curse as they increase their score to seven and zero. Just another great example there of why Curse switched Boy Boy over to the mid lane here to deal with that uh, lockdown potential from Lysandra and Zach. I can only expect that he was like kind of watching the engagement in bottom lane. Yeah. It always makes me chuckle when you catch pro players doing things like that. Boy, boy, still with that blue buff. He has been making sure to grab it up, whether he's denying that. I'll we'll actually look it over at Jackie and see what he's rolling with. He does not have a blue buff, so it is going over to high. Echo and team not utilizing that Zanyas. Now that they have it up, I think they need to start engaging a little bit more. Yeah, Velocity have to make the move. They're the ones that are getting desperate there right we go. now. And one place for it is a manaless Jackie. We'll see what we can do. I don't know if Jackie has a broom up his sleeve to take the spider out, but he definitely has a dissonance, enough mana, and a minion. Oh no, he got blasted from the backside. Chris trying to be tricky. Is the spider fast enough? The cocoon is not. The spider explodes and Jackie lives. Ooh, that Athene's oh, Unholy Grail rush really boy. paid off for Jackie. He's gonna jump. He's gonna do it. Shh. Is he gonna don't, guess? Don't he's guessing it. there. Shh. He's going for it. Oh, he gets boy. it. Oh, he's gonna get it. There's the shield. It's gonna be the let's bounce, and it's gonna be the let's get out of here. Oh, Eveniscus now on the other side, gonna get popped by a boy, boy. Oh, man. NK Inc. stuck with that one. Completely deserved. But the dragon on the other side. I don't think they're able to type worth on this one. Well, they were able to oh, answer at least with the mid turret there. A little so, worth. Yeah. <laughs> a little worth. And tiny text. Eight to one here, dead. Getting a little hairy there, but Echo using Lissandra very effectively gets himself out of an engagement. And if they are actually able to rotate up top and get another global objective in that outer top turret, then this is exactly what Velocity are looking for to get back in this game. They need to slowly, even trading one for one objectives is great for them, but grabbing two here would be amazing. Boy Boy is now at that full kill potential, taking out or getting his last Whisper on. He actually built up a Hex Drinker before that as well, so he's having a good game for himself to piece a few items in between his core ones. Yeah, even though Boy Boy wasn't being very flashy in that mid lane, mm -hmm. he did exactly what they wanted him to. He was a little bit behind in CS, but he never died to Lissandra, and he did draw Zach mid lane several times, t relieving that threat of gank of a gank in the other lanes. 
So 7,000 gold lead now, Kobe. Very definitive, as I said before, by Curse. And they are not stopping. They're keeping the wards up. You can see even deep wards way towards the bottom second tier turrets going down near the red, I should say. And they're able to activate that. We saw that causing a few mishaps for Cloud9 earlier, but Curse is acting on these things immediately, trying to come out with the win as soon as possible. Yeah, the, the ward line down the river is going to be very important, actually, for both teams, because this is the point where we transition into Curse trying to make use of Voidboy as a split pusher mm -hmm. instead of Voidboy as an answer to Lissandra's laning phase. Now that the mid turret is down, that's not the case. Crescendo on the backside, almost missing, Expunge already went off! It's not gonna be Edward, it's gonna be the spray and play, and Edward gets out quite alive, pretty tanky on those shots. He has a golem! <laughs> Edward wanted that kill again here, he's, he's gone with the wow. spirit of the ancient golem to add tenacity right there, and that's because he had already gotten upgraded wow. those uh, boots of lucidity for the cooldown reduction, so he was, Merc Treads are not available to him, next best source persona is that spirit of the ancient golem when you think about it adds everything he does need cooldown reduction Ooh. on that as well oh, oh the chase there look how confident they are right now in the face of velocity that's because nijack he teleports to the red ward that they placed coming into the fight velocity is forced to turn tail and get out of this one echo goes down the flashes over the wall to follow boy boy from the left side finally getting a taste of the fight and it's gonna be Chris going down as well. I thought, were, <laughs> I thought they were finding more, but Eveniscus decided to turn around with Maple Street. They've had a good buddy system the whole time. They keep it alive. Now, yeah, the game just went from an uphill battle here for Velocity to a bloodbath. Curse have just destroyed them. They've got control over the Baron area vision already, and so this move by Velocity with only two members in the area is so dangerous and has extremely low percentage chance of success, but since they're that desperate, they, they're trying to take it. They're going for That's whatever they can good take. Good damage right there on Anai Jackie the Baron. Picked up, however, cops, like I said, are going to waddle out of this one. He's invisible. No problem there. Now These he's guys, invisible. there we go. Oh, yeah, now. Wow, it looked <laughs> like he was. Yeah, let's take a look again. <laughs> so this was a chase, and Boy Boy turns it right back around onto NK. The low damage from Echo at this point, not enough to take out Boy Boy. And even though he gets exhausted, he's able to come back into the fight later because he also had the shield from that Hex Drinker. And St. Vincent does a good job flashing over the wall to chase down Echo. It was just Velocity being too scattered. They thought that they were uh, catching Curse off guard and they chased too long. This is a very common mistake where you've already alerted your enemy to your, your plans. They can see where you're going. And if you continue that chase for too long, it gives Curse enough time for the rest of the members to join the fight and they easily turn that around. Curse doubly making sure that they have even the regular wards being placed. That teleport from Nijaki has come in big in these fights. Usually we kind of see a teleport go to the wayside and it comes in for the late split push, but this has mm -hmm. been used to initiate fights. Curse is, knows they're ahead, and it's really the first time in a few weeks we've seen a team push that lead as they have it. And it's not even that uh, Velocity forgot about the teleport right, or something. Right. It's that they're in such a desperate situation that they have to go for those types of plays and they tried to make a pick happen even knowing that Jack has got his teleport ready and he could join it they just weren't able to pull it off in time 28 minutes they sit right outside the turret St. Vicious giving out a little bit of a laugh in the top lane as these guys head in to take this one out they got some pretty good damage on this now with St. being able to throw out those cues get that cleanup on the Siege coming in on Spirit Fire. So they have control pretty much at the turrets. We'll have to see if they have control at the base, because being funneled into the steps is a different story than the turrets in the lanes. Exactly. It's very hard, actually, for Curse to break through and do a turret dive. So what they're going to do is just rely on that Void Boy split push, which at this point is extremely effective even against that Lissandra because he stacked Merc Treads plus his Hex Tech and another Negatron Cloak. So that's why the damage from Echo looks so pitiful, even in that last fight where he was able to get the full combo off on Boy Boy. Too much magic resistance and no penetration, or not enough penetration right. from Lissandra. See what Edward is also trying to go for, possibly that Morello for him, or something else in his hands. If he wants the Athena himself, he can do it. He probably will have enough money. 4-0-4, four, four, top score on his team. 
assisted in eight of the kills that his team has. They have 12 right now. Five to two in turrets. Chris has let up a kill this game, but they have not since that one. 12 to one here as we reach 30 minutes yeah. into the game. Curse Check with the feeder. Baron buff. Going to start squeezing this last bit of damage out. Feeder, Jackie. About a minute left on Baron. Doing a, a, oh, Maple Street does get slowed down here. So what they can do is use that wave clear that we talked about, this four-man group, to keep Velocity up at this top area and have Voidboy split push. What Velocity need to do is just make that move. They need to go all in while Voidboy is far away. They have plenty of engage. They can use the Zac into the Lissandra combo and get a guaranteed engage on Curse. They're just so scared right now and they're so far behind that they don't feel like they can even step outside the protection of their inhibitor turrets, even if they have a 5 versus 4 situation. A little bit of deja vu here with Hyde doing the same thing on Zed in the bottom lane. The 1v1 duelist just taking the top seat here. You can hear them laughing at each other. They know, they know if they go in on each other, it's going to be one walking away limping. It's most likely Echo at this point. Yeah, and in that Cloud9 game, uh, the the aspect was Cloud uh, High actually got the kill in the solo. So yeah. they were able to just one versus one. He took him out the extra threat and then rotate on over for the extra man advantage. In this case, Cursor just chipping away at the turrets and taking all of the resources on the map. One of the things they don't have is Super Turret Siege to get in here. They do have that Spirit Fire to keep themselves in front of the turret and keep going. We'll have to see if they can initiate. Like you said, it's all on that split push and how they can utilize it. The teleport is up now. They could try to go for the 1-3-1 one, one, as we saw that you know Cloud9 was trying to throw down last game. Curse to back, buy up on the fountain and see what they'll come out with. It's actually quite a bit of wards. Over five wards go out through the entire uh, or tired E of the inventories and that Guardian Angel picked up onto Voy Boy. Yeah, they just went all the way around the map. They've had, they had Velocity boxed up inside their base. Yeah. So they were able to walk all the way around the map, take up the red buff, take up the dragon, do Pasco, do collect $200, <laughs> spend that $200 on a bunch of wards to continue con to control the vision on the entire Velocity side of the map here. And they can just walk this one in. I think that in this case, it's actually better for Curse to go with a 4-1 push rather than a 1-3-1. Uh, because having Orianna plus Nasus together adds so much uh, minion killing power as well as disengage. So if the four-man team does get attacked, then they'll be able to stall out long enough for Boy Boy to help out. And we actually have the Crucible coming out onto Edward. We see that, I believe, on Bloodwater quite a few times, an item he'll always put in his inventory. And we look at just what the comparison is between the AD carries. That three-item cop, Blade of the Rune King, the Phantom Dancer on the Infinity Edge. There's the two items that are going to give you the most. That's the AD carry with that crit damage in the first place. And the, like we said, the AD caster earlier, it, there's AP on Velocity. So he is doing his own armor penetration with that Brutalizer, and that's it. That's yeah. kind of tough. And here comes the engage. NK Inc. does miss uh, the Elastic Slingshot there, but they didn't really want to fight that anyway because they don't have any man advantage up here. They don't have mm -hmm. uh, a turret helping them, and they don't have Lissandra with them. So it's just they're just trying to keep Kerf off, Kerf off and clear the minion waves for right now because with the pickup of that Mikhail's Crucible by Sona, it has pretty much turned Echo into a subpar maze right now with very low damage. Oh, Eveniscus taking a huge hit there. Cop gets the utility of the ball. There's the chain of corruption just skipping in between oh, the champions. Boy, boy. The Guardian Angel goes down. Echo runs for the fountain. He knows he's not going to be able to get that on the way back up, but it is going to be worth that top turret. Not quite able to get the kill as we saw in the Cloud9 game, but Lissandra very oh, hard to lock down. Cop there's the Glenn. cleanse. Can they give him the dissonance to get out of there? Let's bounce. He's going to try to keep him in. They have a lot of numbers coming around that corner, and it is a dark wall. Velocity puts the ward down. They are now able to see a great grasping root on the St. Vicious. The ultimate's on, so they're taking the AoE damage from his da damage over time. Boy, boy, over the wall. Eveniscus cannot, or Echo rather, not following onto that one. And it looks like they all back off. A lot of summoners and a lot of everything used in that fight. Velocity does a good job fending off the, the curse army there, but they did lose their inhibitor turret, which was the objective that curse were after. And curse know what's up right now. Even though they don't have a ward that can see Baron's life, 
they know what Velocity are doing because they're desperate right now and they've seen them walk through the wards. Oh, this is going to be very big. Velocity yeah. almost has to do this right now. Curse knows that as well, and they are not giving him a second to breathe. Boy, Boy goes right in onto Maple Street. This is definitely that nightmare in Maple Street that we were looking for. Boy, Boy backing up, tries to get himself out. You did see Echo there on the bottom left not take the claw. He stayed on the outside knowing it was the lost cause. And that, again, that's, that's not a mis really general mistake by Velocity. It's a move that was brought about by the desperation they were feeling. They decided to go for some something. Uh, we call it the desperate Baron there to try yeah. to answer. And they would not have done that under normal circumstances. But, you know, they took the risky route instead of just turtling. Credit they, due where credit, credit needs to be due. They definitely went for something they had to. Curse, like we said, acting on it as well because they knew Velocity had to, if you can follow that. Exactly, they were. Everybody knew. <laughs> Everybody knew. <laughs> Here comes Echo. He's got the, the speed boots on, but it's they don't have any power to contest this. Not only is there no turret up top, but there's also a Baron buff on Curse right now. And this 1 to 15 in-game score is also disheartening. Velocity are very really feel, feeling it morally as well right now. We've definitely seen, like we said, Velocity, well, we said being one of the teams to try new things, but more than not, they have. Maple Street's played Varus the past few times, but Echo's changing up his champion pool for this Super Week. We see everybody else kind of trying to pull out a few, a few things, Eveniscus trying to stay true, but we've seen other teams not being able to comp around the changes they're trying to make. Yeah, I mean, we, Echo's doing a good job. He pulled out the Lissandra. It was very popular in Europe, but we, had never, we haven't seen it much mm -hmm. in the North American LCS, so technically um, sort of a new variation that we haven't seen here, and it's a, it's a good theoretic uh, composition here. You know, they have great engage if they could actually get it together without losing so heavily in the laning phase. They just, they never got to really the mid game where they wanted to make use of the, the Zack engage followed up by the Lissandra and, and Zyra. They never got to that point to be able to use the combo that they built their team around. And we see now, it's kind of becoming a lie that I said Curse is efficiently working off the fact that they're ahead in this game. They're 20,000 gold ahead now and still being pushed off of these engagements. I know they don't want to make a mistake, but at some point you have to put your foot down and start cracking down the front door and each three of the inhibitors. They have the top one, which means that huge wave is pounding into the base. Every 30 seconds a wave spawns, so 10 seconds ago is a wave spawning. That's why they can focus on this turret. The super minions are not on their mind and they're trying to hold it. And remember, Curse don't really want to chance this too bad. There's oh, the engage on the Oh, a chance comp. has been taken by Velocity. They go right in. The Crescendo is on top of Echo. So the Stranglethorn did not do much. It just popped everybody up for a Polaroid. After that, it was Curse coming out on top. The double kill coming in for Cop. A double kill for Voiboy Boy and Nijacky will top it off with a cherry. And Edwards Blue just had a bunch of wards just for the show. They've claimed the base as their own now. Curse gonna walk this one in. Looks like they will be able to take down the turret. This is what they said. It would be towards the end of the split is when they needed to make their run. They are staying true to their word. Edward and team able to pick up another win on Super Week. Curse really so in their veteran colors here. They they were at the bottom and they needed to make a stand. It's sort of uh, the the buzzer plays that they're they're looking for. <laughs> when it really counts. They need to pull out the wins, and they've done it so far here in Super Week. At the end of the game there, a lot of Velocity saying, GG, good luck in the rest of the week, you know, keeping the camaraderie up. They know these guys are playing hard. Everybody has trained hard coming into this one, and we see Curse taking a bit of their victory walk, quite happy with themselves, and I think the fans as well, seeing this team really come around to what everybody's been expecting. Yeah, Velocity not too upset because their fate's already been sealed. Mm -hmm. They're going into relegation. They're going to be playing in that tournament. And they, you know, the outcome of this, while you don't want to lose, doesn't right. really hurt them that much. The chance is still there. They got the chance to get back in. Curse, however, doing big things for themselves as they get another victory on the week, and they're going to be coming out even stronger. So a team to watch coming into our Super Week. All right, guys, we have to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be joined by Curse.